Okay, so here we have a PX backup installment on your left and a terminal open to the Kubernetes cluster that's running Cassandra on your right. Let's go ahead and log into Portworx backup. What you'll see here is the cluster has already been added to PX backup, and I'll provide some links in the description about how to do that. On the right here, we can see that the get nodes command matches the version and everything that's reported in PX backup UI 117.8. And we can go ahead and look at the Cassandra deployment that's running in the Cassandra 1 NS namespace. It's been up and running. And if we go into the backup UI specifically for this cluster and select the Cassandra 1 NS namespace, we should see the exact same resources, such as the staple set, PVCs, service, and uh, PVs associated with Cassandra. So now let's go ahead and log into this Cassandra database to look at the existing key space, as well as some data within a table that we'll use to demonstrate our backup and restore process. So here the key space is named new key space and we have a EMP or employee table that has a list of three employees, their name, phone, and salary. So when we set up the rules for pre and post backup, we want to keep this in mind in terms of our workload. You can create generic or specific rules. Here we have a pre-flush and a verify that we're going to configure. Here we have it named as Cassandra pre-flush. We've targeted the app for Cassandra and we've left the check marks unchecked, meaning that it'll run in the foreground and on every pod in Cassandra. And we're flushing the key space, new key space, which is important here. Now, it's also important that we don't check run in a single pod because node tool needs to run on every pod in that Cassandra cluster or every node, really. So the verify key space is really just verifying the checksums for that key space and the SS tables. So here we're just validating that our database is in a good working order post backup. Next, let's go ahead and enter that namespace again and back up our Cassandra deployment. We'll have to give it a name, a backup location, as well as the information for our pre and post rule. Here we select the ones that we were just going through. Once done, hit create, and this will kick off the backup. The backup will go through a pending to an in progress to a completed state and right now it's in pending. Right after this, it will run the pre-exec rule. Sometimes it's hard to catch it. Um, so if we go to show details, we can see it's already run because if it if it ran and something went wrong, we, we actually see the backup turn red because it, it won't continue. So now we can double check in the details that our pre-exec rule and post-exec rule are actually referencing the ones we expect. And as it goes through the backup, it will go ahead and back up all the resources, such as the PVCs, the service, and staple set, as well as the actual volumes backing each Vara lib Cassandra or Cassandra data directory that are all of our SS tables live in. So now that it's showing up as a success, we now have a completed backup and we can look at the details that shows us everything successfully completed and our PVCs, Portworx volumes are all backed up as well as all, all of our services. So now we can go ahead and go back to our Cassandra table and insert another row, just because we wanna demonstrate that our restore is actually restoring the correct information, which is really just the three records because we took a backup after we had three records. Post backup, we added a record. So now we go ahead and click restore and we give this restore a name as well. And we need to select the destination cluster. In this case, we're restoring right back to the same cluster. But what I'm gonna do is do a custom restore and assume that we're taking 
a restore to do some testing. Say that I wanted a copy of my production application or a copy of my dev application. I want to put it into a new namespace. And this is what I'm doing with Cassandra 1 NS testing. And I want to make sure to kind of replace anything in there because it is a testing namespace. Go ahead and click Restore. And this will kick off the restoration of all the volumes and then all the resources that were part of that backup. You can look at the same information such as show details. You can also verify by checking the Kubernetes cluster through the CLI that the applications are going to be starting back up. And here we'll look at the pods in the new namespace. And it just started to restore one second ago. And now we have everything running. So now that we have a copy of our Cassandra cluster restored from our backup, let's go ahead and log into this new Cassandra cluster and verify that it has, in fact, the right data. Now, if we select our new key space that we are doing the uh, backup and restore and the flushing and verifying on, we can verify that the expected table has the correct amount of rows in it. So if we select the employees table, here we can see that it has all three here. So what we've shown really is the fact that you can specifically create application rules for your data service. In this case, we're running Cassandra and we're using the node tool flush and node tool verify commands to run our pre and post backup hooks. And so this creates a, a consistent and verifiable backup and restore process for Cassandra. I hope that you've enjoyed this demo and until next time, take care.